Hello, I'm Maddie Harlan from Permaculture Magazine and I am at the Oxford Real Farming Conference 2020 and I'm with Christopher Jones from Woodland Valley Farm and I want to ask you, first of all, tell me a little bit about the farm and what you do there. Okay, um, Woodland Valley Farm, it's a family owned farm that we've been on since 1960. Um, it's uh, about uh, 140 acres of grass and the rest is woodland of some sort or other or buildings um, and we currently have a small dairy herd there about 70 or 80 hybrid cows and you also have something else that you're doing so yeah. tell us about how that came apart okay um, uh, I, I've always been very interested in wildlife and I've become aware through reading about uh, rewilding this kind of thing um, uh, back in the very early years of the century, uh, that beavers were beginning to make a comeback in the UK. And I found um, uh, slowly more information about them and that they'd been brought back into Scotland and that they were living out on the River Tay quite happily. Um, and uh, then there were some in Kent um, and uh, then there were some in Devon. And, and I was just really interested in that. And I thought, well, why can't we have them back in Cornwall too? Because they seem a very interesting and pretty harmless kind of animal. Um, you know, it's not like bringing back wolves or bears, you know, some little eager children or a royal for the livestock. Um, and um, I uh, was really, really pushed uh, into this when the village downstream of us was flooded twice in 2012. And uh, that was pretty unusual. And of course, uh, we've all been following climate change and what's supposed to happen with increased rainfall and increased drought and all these sorts of things. Well, you know, there's a real potential now, I think, to, to bring them back as, as a part of the solution to that. So we've got a guy from the Environment Agency to visit the farm just to talk about how we can hold more water there in the first place. And um, he had lots of prescriptions. Um, uh, when I asked him if there was any budget to implement these things, he said, no, no, there's no budget. Uh, and then I said, okay, well, if we can do it, um, could you help us to uh, you know, maintain it? Because it wouldn't even make sense. And he said, no, no, there's no budget. So, okay, could we get Beavis to do it for free? And he said, um, more or less, yes, that would work. <laughs> but he worked for the government, so he couldn't really say. Uh, and we then went to our Wildlife Trust and spoke to them, and we began to, to um, um, create a project around the idea of bringing back some beavers there. And I initially I thought naively that we'd just get some two or three pairs and let them go, um, but then that was unfortunately illegal. Um, but if we had them inside uh, a fence, then there was n no more questions to answer, we just have them there, sort of like exotic pets almost. Um, and so we uh, started to do some studies on the river uh, to see how it behaved uh, um, before, during and after rainfall. Um, uh, without the beavers there and then in uh, 2017 we had a, a crowdfunding campaign to pay for the fence and we bought some beavers on. So how much does that cost? Um, well the, the, the total crowdfunder um, uh, was £20,000. Oh. Uh, the fencing was around about half of that. Uh, the beams I seem to remember were about four and a half or five thousand, mm. um, and we actually uh, we initially asked for fifteen, but we, we, we did better than we thought, mm. and so we spent the extra money on um, cameras and um, some training for myself and some of the wildlife trust people uh, to do with beaver management. And, and, so and how big is the actual area that you've designated? The area is five acres. Right, so it's uh, considerable. Yeah, um, and it has got two hundred meters of stream running down through it um, but the, the you know once you get beyond about 20 meters of water the beavers don't seem to go you know they, they really want to be close to water for security okay okay and so tell me what's happened well I mean uh, did you do anything for the beavers to get them started um, not really of, no no, no the, there was already a small pond there yeah um, which they went into that small pond was perhaps about knee deep right. um, and uh, we put the beavers there. We had quite a few people come to watch this really special mm. occasion. Um, and uh, we then had a party afterwards, left the beavers alone, um, came down to see them the next night and we saw them uh, swimming about. And then the day after that, 
they began building the dam. And uh, they didn't really stop since then. So the, the critical uh, kind of thing is that um, after the beavers were here, we had 10 weeks without rain. And then it did rain, but the profile of the water leaving was very, very different from that coming in for the first time uh, in, in two years. In that 10 week period, the beavers have built four dams. Wow. Yeah, wow. And uh, they have, since then, they've um, spent a lot more time improving those dams, making them bigger and wider, and built two more dams, three more dams, four more dams on top of that. So we now have eight dams. Uh, and it's not just the water, um, um, and so slowing down flood water, yeah, if you like. Yeah. Uh, also, in time of drought, they're holding a lot of water. So you've got slow release across We've the landscape. We've got slow release across the landscape, yeah. And, and it's presumably filtrated as well. Uh, uh, yes, so because the water sediment. slows down, sediment falls out. Yeah. So the water gets cleaner as you go further down the system. Right. Um, and this is just on 200 metres yeah. of stream. Yeah. And if we had it on um, a kilometre of stream, yeah. it would begin to make significant differences yeah. to the place where the flooding, flooding takes place. Um, the other things about it are, you know, in, in dry weather, uh, water builds up. They find it much easier to build when the, the water inflow is low mm. because it's not fighting a current. Mm. So actually, uh, during the drought of 2018, mm. our water levels just went up and up and up. Mm. We had water there we could uh, uh, pump out to irrigate pasture. Right. Yeah. So in other words, what, what, by introducing these animals, we began to improve the general sort of environment. Yeah. And they've also been pushing a lot of water out outside the stream as well. It's really uh, fascinating. And it's all helping to make that, uh, that delay in the water crossing, crossing our site. So, check that out. Hey. Is that not just completely mad? You didn't see this last time. So, uh, when we put this camera here, this post was that far from the water. So they've pushed the water out sort of six feet across country there. Um, and they cleared a great area in the brambles over there. Um, and they used those brambles to help building the little dam. Yeah, yeah. So you see, there's a stream going up there. It sort of goes all around there and then bends around. And uh, well, let's say until a week ago, we would bring people down here, and then there, there's the previous uh, sort of dam, which has got bigger still. Um, we would bring them uh, down here, uh, look around all this stuff, and then go for a w then walk across the, the river there. You can't do that anymore. Uh, well, not in Wellington boots. You'd need waders now. They've put so much water there. Okay, so here we are uh, about eight weeks in now. This is where they actually started uh, to dam. After two nights, I think they began here. And uh, these weeks on, we've now got an extra 70 centimeters plus of uh, water being held back behind this dam. And that equates to around about a thousand cubic meters of water extra that's being held here. Um, but they've also started building downstream up here as well. And we've got three more dams going downstream already. So these guys, they just don't give up. They just keep work, work, work. Not a huge amount, but they've done it. Because before the water was all over there. We have more fish now than before. Right. And they're bigger and fatter. Right. You know, in 2018, it's stable ecology. that's right. In, in, in 2018, uh, fish were dying 
mm. because there wasn't enough water in lots of streams. Mm. Mm. In our case, the fish just increased in numbers mm. and, and general well-being. Um, we have uh, more things that eat fish. Yeah, herons, uh, exactly. kingfishers. Yes, cormorants. You know, yeah. we get, uh, you know, since the beavers have been there, we've had six new bird records. Wow. Three new mammal records. Um, we've had, uh, I mean, countless insects. I mean, I, I, I'm not an insect person, yeah. um, but I've seen things like water stick insects, for example. Yeah. Never knew there was such a thing, right. but the, the, the big, big stick yeah. insects like this living in the, in the water. Uh, a host of dragonflies, uh, of different types of dragonfly. Um, and uh, just a, as a, a little anecdote, uh, in August 2019, I was taking some people from the National Trust around the site, and over one of the dams, there were about a dozen spotted flycatchers hawking out over the dam, oh, having a good nosh. They were there for a couple of days, having a good nosh before heading south lovely. on the migration. Now, you know, this is on 200 metres of stream, it's a postage dam. Yeah. Imagine what it would be like when we get these animals back properly and they're on 2,000 kilometres. Yeah. You know, we want to be exactly this, this is something yeah. that we need now in our countryside. They do have impacts, we shouldn't shy away from that. They do cut down trees, um, they do cause local flooding, um, you know, they, they, they have impacts, but they're easily managed. So, we've taken some of our trees um, and painted them with PVA glue and sand. So, those ones, the beavers won't bite those exactly because it's not nice. <laughs> Uh, biting sand, so they don't touch those. Whereas the ones crazy. next to them, they do exactly. The ones next to them, they 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 uh, they, they join. Have you noticed anything with tree growth as well downstream? Because you've got because you've slowed the water down, you've, you've there's more opportunity for the landscapes to be more of a sponge. Um, I have not. No, um, really I'm not saying that it isn't uh, an effect, maybe, but I think. Um, we need to be doing more of it mm. on more of the stream. Mm. The piece they're on is uh, basically a, a, an area of wet woodland. We do put the cows in there from time to time because there's stuff there for them to browse, um, but it's basically wet woodland. Uh, the next field down or the next area down is just uh, pasture fields with a stream running through it. Mm. And so I want to have beavers on there so we can then see how they react with that grassland. You know, they eat pretty much any kind of vegetation you can imagine. Um, uh, you know, it, it's much easier to say what they don't eat than what they do eat because they, 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 you know, they have tree bark uh, and leaves and then grass and brambles and ferns and I mean you name it and, and they'll probably have a go at it. Um, the, 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 the critical thing for, I think for the biodiversity is because the water slows up algae can start to form. And algae is the bottom of all the food chains, mm, mm. and so but it's kind the, of like freshwater plankton, isn't it? Exactly, yeah. yeah. And so there's yeah. lots of little tiny stuff there, yeah. little tiny uh, uh, photosynthetic mm. uh, 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 material there, which is going away, and that is being um, consumed by all sorts of. And that's why your fish are bigger. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. In other words, we've, we've, what we've done is we've begun to restore the ecological integrity of that waterway, yeah. and we can't do it. Do it properly until we can get access to beavers to the whole right. thing, but then yeah, I think we'll see incredible changes um, and, and we need to be doing that. So next steps, besides expanding your little plot um, of, of stream, well, next um, steps? I uh, go and speak to a lot of uh, groups of interested people, um, communities, um, landowners, farmers, uh, conservation groups, all sorts of people. And this is beginning to generate inquiries. And so last year, uh, myself and some friends set up something called uh, Beaver Trust. And um, our mission, if you like, is to uh, convene meetings of stakeholders and where there's a demand for having beavers, um, uh, to transmit that to uh, uh, the, the powers that be, if you like, but also to do whatever we can to facilitate them actually achieving their own beavers back in their rivers and streams um, across the country. And I think it's it's uh, it's something. You know, this is rewilding what we can do mm. without ruining the f the productive capacity of the countryside to feed us. All we need to do is is uh, have decent uh, river buffers. Mm. I don't know, twenty meters, thirty meters, mm. something like that. Um, this, to me, is the perfect example of uh, a public goods 
uh, yeah, public money for public yes. goods kind of exactly. uh, 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 thing. Uh, so farmers can carry on farming, step back from the rivers, maybe still have some grazing there, who knows, you know, that's a natural kind of process, mm. but, but step back in terms of chemistry and cultivation mm. and let the beavers get on with it. And, and we think, know that riparian edges create more fertile farms. Exactly. So it is yeah. win-win, the yeah. whole thing. No, I, 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 I really think this is the, 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 the entry-level animal for rewilding, really. So they, really? They, they don't eat people or anything, no. and they do their work where they do have an impact that's unwelcome, you can fix it. It's not, it's not difficult. Lovely. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much for talking to us. Really, really welcome. Thank you. So if you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe and press the little bell button and then we'll let you know, notify you of all our forthcoming films. And thanks very much for watching. I want to go